The Life and Times of William Morris. William Morris was well known for all his textile work, but he was also a designer, a craftsman, a writer, and a well-known social activist. He was born into a wealthy middle-class family on Monday, March 24, 1834, in Welshington, uh, United Kingdom. Being the third oldest out of 18 siblings, he was named after his father, William Morris. Morris enjoyed his childhood playing on the countryside with his siblings. This love for nature would influence his work greatly later on in life. At the age of nine, he was enrolled into a prep school and then a boarding school. He was a very bright child. But then sadly, in 1847, Morris was barely turning 13 years old when his father passed away of unknown cause. He went to study at Marswell College in Welshire. He disliked it, but he took the many opportunities to visit all the prehistoric sites, which inspired him into his love of medieval style. Morris entered Oxford University. He disliked the school right away due to their method of teaching. But while he was at Oxford, he became great friends with the pre-Raphaelite group, like Burne Jones and Dante Rezzoletti. The pre-Raphaelite ideas profounded forming Morris's view on art. 1857, William Morris married Jan Byrne. He met Jan in 1857 and immediately fell in love with her. She was a daughter of an Oxford stableman. She didn't love him, but she wasn't. She thought she would never get another chance to marry an upper class man. Jane Burden was an English embroiderer and model for the pre raphaelite She embodied their idea of beauty. Jane mostly a model for Rossetti. She modeled for Morris once. During the first couple months of their friendship, Morris wrote on the back of his first canvas of her, I can't paint you because I love you. Study believes that the La Brie Israel is the only p oil painting that Morris ever completed of her. Jan Morris was one of the original designers and embroiderers of the arts and crafts movement. She became a great pianist and was able to learn to read and write in English and Italian, an opportunity she would have never had if she didn't marry Morris. After they married, Morris and his friends Architect Philip Webb designed and constructed a new family home, naming it the Red House. Morris was deeply influenced by medieval and non-Gothic style, and that reflected throughout the building's design. During this time, his friends from the pre-Raphaelites came over and helped decorate the inside of his lovely home. Morris wanted to wanted the house to be a place that reflect his ideas, celebrate art, the craftsmanship, and the community. It was the first house built according to the principle of fine artists, and ultimately that became the hallmark of the design firm Morris founded with Webb in 1861. As well as embarking the arts and crafts movement, today the Red House of now functions as a museum for all. Within the two years of marriage, William and Jan had their two daughters, Jan, known as Jenny, and Mary. Jenny was born January 17, 1861. Jenny and her sister Mary were both homeschooled and were very intelligent. Jenny suffered from epilepsy. When she got older, the symptoms got worse. She couldn't live alone and had to stay at home until her mother died. She also was a skilled embroiderer like her mother and sister. She was born on March 25, 1862, and just like her mother, she learned how to embroider. And in later in life, she started to make and design jewelry. 1878, she enrolled into the National Art Trading School, and by the age of 23, she became the director of embroidery department at her father's empire, Morris & Company. In 1861, William Morris co-founded a decorative art firm. They called it Morris Marshall Faulkner. First headquarters was in London. Soon, the firm became very popular, and their decorative art became the highlight of Victorian era. Morris was a major contributor to the trade of British textile art and the method of producing. The fine art workmen worked with all types of media, painting, carving, and then furniture to start out with, then becoming so much more by taking up stained glass, metalwork, paper handling, carpeting, and printing fabrics. In 1874, to make his work easier, Morris came up with the idea with to use block printing to help make his wallpapers. The block printing is like a huge stamp. It cut The image is cut out of wood or metal to recreate the same image over and over again. Some wallpaper takes up to four weeks and over 30 blocks to produce one design. Besides wallpaper and textile, he also became interested in book designing and printing. Improving history, Morris followed the Kelmscott Press in the early 1891. 
Over the years of production, Morse oversaw every detail, including designing three typefaces that he used for himself for the printing, finding sources for custom handmade paper, designing ornament and tiles, and designing borders for his books. This man went from wallpaper artist to now book designer. During Morris's book designing, he wanted something new. He didn't want the new age of books to look like the same past books. He already changed the method of production. Why not go the extra step and create his own typeface to go with the new way of printing? Being inspired by the past old manuscripts done by Nicholas Johnson using his original typeface Dove. Morris created his own typeface, calling it Golden Type, naming it after his first fine book, Golden Legend, printed on the new Clem Scott machine. Stepping away from art and design for a minute, in 1883, Morris joined a political party called the Social Democrat Federation. He was dedicated to teach socialistic ideas and hoped to create more socialists. In 1884, William Morris found a new party calling it the Socialist Legion. He believed that it was the main function to educate the people. So to spread the world, he published a journal called The Commonwealth. The monthly paper first appeared February 1885. The first edition of The Commonwealth sold over 5,000 copies. It remained a monthly paper until 1886, when it changed to into a week. The sales weren't doing so well and was costing Morris about 500 pounds a year. Finally, in 18. 95, Morris had to accept defeat and the Commonwealth had to stop production. In 1890, Morris wrote a book named News from Nowhere. In this novel, a main character came home from a socialist meeting and fell asleep. Upon awakening, he finds himself teleported into the future. The story expressed the society which has a common ownership of goods and a democratic control of means of production. As the character travels from place to place, he notices how things would have changed. The book encompasses Morris's beliefs of a utopia, and his beliefs come from his socialist movement. During William Morris's lifetime, he was a great inspiration around the world from his life or work as an artist to a social activist. His youngest daughter, May, was involved with the arts and crafts scene through the 1890s to the 90s. She designed jewelry, wrote poems, articles, and a book on embroidery called Designing Needlework, published in 1893. She became an advisor and a teacher for the Central School of Arts and Crafts at Birmingham. She was also the founder of the Women's Guild of Arts in the early 1907 and remained the president until 1930. Even today in the modern world, William Morris has been inspiring new designers every day. In 2016, Joe Richard was the first designer to be granted full access to the archives of William Morris. Joe Richard picked up the handcrafted element of William's work and wanted to bring it to a modern day. With the inspiration of William's block prints, he designed and produced a floral pattern fashion design for a spring-summer collection in 2016. In 1896, October 3rd, William Morris died from tuberculosis at the age of 62. When he died, his doctors said that Morris carried out the work of 10 men during his lifetime. Morris had a motto, As langa verem braves, meaning in English, life is short, but art is forever. <laughs>